Welcome to another scriptural study as we continue with our three-part series. With part two of numbering our days with the sun, moon, with the stars. In part two, we will share the scriptural and astronomical witnesses in creation in counting our days with the sun. To find out if a scriptural year is 365.25 days, 364 days, or both. And the final question, which is, is there a 13th month? Please see part one if you have not done so already, as we cover the scriptural and astronomical witnesses of counting our days with the moon. Let us now proceed with part two of this three-part series. In part two, we will explore what is in a scriptural year based on the word, let alone what can be counted daily and are observed astronomically in creation, day after day and year after year. Please place your computer monitors on full screen as we will be sharing minute details. And feel free to stop the video at any time to further focus on the scriptural and associated information being shared in greater detail. So, how does the Almighty Yahuwah teach us to number our days? The answer comes to us in the text analysis, because it is a verb, which means it demands physical action on our part to learn, doesn't it? Isn't a verb just a word used to describe an action, state, and or occurrence that we may apply to bring our hearts to wisdom? So, how many people in the world today actually number and or count their days in advance, utilizing the sun, moon, with the stars as per scripture? And more importantly, then go outside in creation to verify how the Father of Lights created the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night with the stars, to understand his signs and appointed times. Or are you like the rest of the people in the world that lets the beast number your days, rather than Yahuwah, the Father of Lights? So let us now explore the scriptural and astronomical witnesses in creation that allows us to number our days with the sun. So, does the scripture and creation provide witnesses on seasonal markers? Does the scripture and creation provide witnesses on a 365.25 day year? Does the scripture and creation provide witnesses on a 364 day year? And does the scripture and creation provide witnesses on a 13th month? So let us proceed with the first question. In scripture, this marker is known as Takufa, which describes a coming around, circuit of time or space, a turning, a circuit, which acts in a revolution that is of the sun's course in time, as per scripture from year to year, and is linked to the festivals of Yahuwah annually. As per the word, Yahuwah set up a tent for the sun, and it rises from one end of the heavens and its circuit to the other end. And the ancients knew very well about the turn of the year because the scripture reveals how they waited for the spring Tekufa to occur, and or the circuit of time with the sun in the spring before engaging in their war campaigns, which took place right after the spring Tekufa, just as scripture shares in 2 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 23, and verified in the same book in chapter 36, verse 10 with a further witness in 2 Shemuel chapter 11, verse 1. 
including 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 22. The Father of Lights created the sun as a sign, a signal, a flag, beacon, monument, and or a mark. And the sun, in alignment with the moon, with the stars, would determine appointed times, days, and years. But mankind ignores what the scripture states about the sun, moon, with the stars, don't they? And as such, have instituted different calendar systems that add and or take away from the word by creating timing systems with only one of the components of the three that make up the true celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. And worse yet, have people worship everything but the master of heaven, who does not dwell in dwellings made with hands. But since when, throughout history, does man actually count their days as per scripture? They don't, do they? History has proven time and time again that the land is filled with idols. Their world religions will always have people bowing down to the work of their hands and to what their fingers have made, won't they? So, what is this scriptural Takufa, and or scriptural circuit of time, that is a repetitive annual revolution of the sun's course, that from year to year we can see the festivals come around in their proper place and time, that will teach us how to number our days, to bring our hearts to wisdom. Again, The scripture reveals that the ancients knew when the spring occurred and acted accordingly after the spring equinox, as we already have reviewed with these scriptural verses, and thus why they fully understood that the true and proper count to Shavuot, known as the Feast of Weeks, which will always be after the summer solstice. And why the festival and or feast of ingathering during booths or Sukkot always takes place after the fall and or autumn equinox. Because scripturally we are to gather three times a year for a feast to Yahuwah. Because the scriptural harvest circuit is aligned with the agricultural harvest circuit year after year. This, of course, only exists when we let Yahuwah, the Father of Lights, teach us to number our days, to bring our hearts to wisdom. And thus why we quickly learn that the annual spring agricultural harvest cycle is aligned to the scriptural spring cycle feast or harvest and why the annual summer agricultural harvest cycle is aligned to the scriptural summer cycle feast. And yes, why the annual fall and or autumn agricultural harvest cycle is aligned to the scriptural fall cycle harvest and feast. And look, The world gathers and worships its deities when there is the least amount of sunlight in the dark of winter, before the real start of the new year in the spring. The appointed times of Yahuwah are aligned with creation. But the world follows a calendar that hangs on a wall, doesn't it? Yes, the beast has identified a way to take away the celestial sun, moon, with the stars, in order to add in their own system with the intent to change appointed times and law, as they clearly and blatantly ignore the true appointed times of Scripture, in order to have the masses follow them to fulfill their non-scriptural indulgences. 
because it is not good business for them if the people in the world follow the Father of Lights, which is Yahuwah, and his son, the Messiah, Yahushua. So, yes indeed, the scripture and creation provide many witnesses on seasonal markers, don't they? On to category two. Does the scripture and creation provide witnesses on a 365.25 day year? Many find it utterly amazing, as do I, that Hanok lived 365 years, and that he walked with the Almighty, becoming one of his first astronomers of creation. And then there is the evidence that Hanok indeed mentioned that a solar year is 365.25 days. And yes, people question this translation. But in the same book, they do not question for one second what Hanok stated about the lunar year, which consists of 354 days. And when compared to the solar year, it was 12 days short of the solar circle. Hmm, indeed. Especially when the astronomical evidence in creation supports what Hanok stated about a 365.25 day solar year. When one follows scripture and does not take away and or add one will start to realize how the sun with the stars provides wisdom when numbering our days. Because we do have consistent astronomical evidence in creation when the solar equinox and solstices occur, let alone the equilux for those in the know about this, as verified by scripture, which reveals that the feast cycle of Yahuwah is indeed aligned with creation's agricultural cycle annually, proving that people who do not utilize scripture to number their days to bring their hearts to wisdom, let alone test and prove all things in creation, will actually deny and ignore the Creator as verified by the astronomical evidence in his creation. Isn't it true that the will of an unbeliever always attempts to supersede the will of our Father in heaven? So in the spirit of testing and proving all things, how many days will there be starting from the equinox in 2017 up to and including the day before the equinox in 2018? Yes, 365 days. And notice how many hours this is, because this is very important in some of the later parts of this presentation. Along with the alternative time units in seconds, minutes, days, and weeks, which highlights why man's seven-day weekly cycle is not in alignment with Yahuwah's weekly cycle. Okay, what about for the same time period from 2018 to 2019? Yes, 365 days. And notice how many hours this is again. But what do we find with the same time period of 2019 to 2020? What? 366 days? How can that be? Because a true scriptural year consists of 365.25 days annually. Just as Hanok stated, because in just one year with the fake beast Gregorian system, it comes out of alignment with scripture and creation by one quarter of a day. In two years, the fake beast Gregorian time system is out of alignment with scripture and creation by two quarters of a day and or a half day. While by year three, the beast Gregorian time system is out of alignment with scripture and creation by three quarters of a day. 
And in a four-year period, the fake calendar Gregorian system that hangs on a wall is out of alignment with scripture and creation by a full day. Now you know why this world's religious beast time system invented a 366th day year out of thin air. As Yahuwah and his creation exposes this fake additional pagan day, which we can see quite easily. Isn't this just an excellent example from a world's organization ignoring scripture? as they indeed add and take away yearly. As they openly admit to change appointed times and law. Don't trust me. Do your own research. These truths are extremely easy to verify. Because men and their world religious timing forgeries are always exposed with their embarrassing methods of intercalation. Isn't it ironic that this silly practice is also called an embolism? Hallelujah that the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah maintains itself and doesn't need man to make adjustments. And why the scripture and creation reveal in astronomy the analemma from the Greek which means support, which is a diagram showing the variation of the position of the sun in the sky over the course of a 365.25 day solar year, as viewed at a consistent set time of the day and from a set location on earth. So, let Yahuwah teach you to number your days and bring your heart to wisdom. Because Anyone can go outside in creation and draw out the analemma that will always highlight a simple figure eight visual showing the variation of the position of the sun in the sky over the course of a 365.25 day solar year. Even movies have portrayed how the analemma works day after day, month after month, and year after year as a reliable way to navigate time. Many photographers even take the time to take pictures daily of the sun, which over a 365.25 solar day year produces this figure eight visual known as the analemma. Is it any coincidence then that the last great day is known as the eighth day? Or that the first Sabbath of every month is on the eighth day of any given month with the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. Or why the consecration of Aaron took place on the eighth day. Or why the Messiah Yahushua appeared to his apostles after eight days. Oh, the tremendous joy one can attain in counting their days as per the word. And even more wonderful is scripturally verifying how to number our days in creation. So, yes indeed, the scriptures in creation cry out that there is without doubt a 365.25 day solar year. On to category three. Does the scripture in creation provide witnesses on a 364 day year? Doesn't the book of Jubilees state that 364 days will constitute a complete year? And doesn't the book of Hanok talk about a 364 day year as well? But wait a minute. Didn't Hanok state that how the sun sets according to the number of days is 365 and a quarter? Is there a discrepancy here and or contradiction? Well, if you follow the world and its world religions, they will tell you there is a contradiction and or discrepancy, won't they? 
Should we, though, be conformed to the errors of this world and or become transformed by the renewing of our minds and prove what is good and well-pleasing to the Almighty One? Will we not follow Yahuwah with His creation to teach us how to number our days? Because a simple pen and piece of paper outside in creation does wonders in keeping the beast at bay. Because, and as we have seen, Scripture is verified in creation that there is indeed 365.25 days in a solar year, as per the very word let alone how the agricultural cycle in creation is completely aligned with the scriptural and spiritual feast harvest cycle and why the world worships in the dark and all within this annual solar time frame. So why then is an annual star year only 364 days as easily counted and verified. In creation, between each equinox, year after year after year. We can easily verify this in creation in any year, let alone 2016 to 2017. As there are indeed 364 days in a star year, counting or numbering the day after the equinox to the day before the equinox isn't there. What about from 2017 to 2018, applying the same count in creation with the star clock? Yes, indeed, and as verified in creation, 364 days. Hallelujah! The sun and stars work in perfect alignment year after year, as long as we do not add and or take away from Scripture as verified in creation. Isn't this what Hanok stated about how the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly, and why there is 364 days in a star year? Because The majority of people who do not number their days with Scripture in creation are not aware of the counter-clockwise star clock that exists in the heavens, or Shemaim, and thus are not aware how the Almighty Yahuwah explained the counter-clockwise star clock mentioned in the book of Job or Eob, chapter 38, verses 31 and 32. Because this counterclockwise star clock, known as Ursa Major today, keeps the seasons in check year after year in alignment with the sun as it revolves around the north star known as Polaris today. This clock in the sky is a 23-hour and 56-minute daily clock unlike a regular analog clock face where an hour takes up 30 degrees of a full circle. The imaginary hour hand on the star clock moves only 15 degrees counterclockwise every hour. What's more is that this hour hand moves counterclockwise only for 23 hours and 56 minutes every day which means that this star clock has four minutes less daily than that of a solar day. Because, again, Ursa Major revolves around Polaris once a day in 23 hours and 56 minutes, which equates to 8,736 hours in a side real year, which equates to, wait for it, 364 days just as the sun accumulates 8,760 hours in a side real year, which equates to 365.25 days. Thus, how the sun and stars are in their perfect harmonious alignment in creation 
and verify what Hanuk wrote, that the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly, so that they do not advance and or delay their position by a single day unto everlasting, but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days. Yes, Hanok was an accurate astronomer, thus revealing that both the scripture and creation prove that a solar sidereal year has 365.25 days, and that a star year with the sun brings in the seasons accurately within 364 days. Now that's precision. Answering the question fully in Category 3. While a lunar year has 354 days, and it is indeed found wanting as compared to the solar circle, and or a 365.25 solar side reel year. Which brings us to our fourth and final category, which asks the question, does the scripture in creation provide witnesses on a 13th month? Do you remember the examples about the beast and how it intended to change appointed times and law, thus ignoring scripture on how to number its days with the sun, moon, with the stars? Because, as we have seen, uh, their fake calendar that hangs on a wall ignores a true solar year, which removed a quarter of a day each year. And thus, they find themselves having to intercalate every four years to keep their fake timing system in alignment to scripture and creation. By adding a day out of thin air every four years, all calendars are accountable to scripture as verified in the Shemaim. Better stated... All calendars are accountable to the greater light, which holds us to a 365.25 day solar side reel year. And why Hanuk stated that the lunar cycle is 354 days, which will be short and or be wanting by 12 days annually to the solar cycle and or circle. This, of course, is confirmed in the book of Hanok, chapter 79, verse 4, when he speaks about a half of a lunar cycle, which is 177 days. When multiplied by 2 gives us 354 lunar days. He goes on again to verify this in the same verse, breaking it down by weeks and days. And yes, Creation proves this as well as anyone can research through astronomical resources, let alone going outside in creation. But Hanok stated that this 354-day lunar cycle is 12 days wanting to the solar cycle or circle. Well, let's do the astronomical math. 365.25 solar days minus... 354 lunar days equals 11.25 days wanting. Yes, more than 11 days. Because in a solar year, the lunar cycle would be out of alignment with the solar cycle by a third of a month, two thirds in two years, and approximately a full month in three years. So, what are the witnesses in creation for a 13th month? As per the many previous presentations on this YouTube channel, the first day of the year is when the full moon is in proximity with two stars known as the branch and the foot of the preacher, while the sun is in proximity to the star known as the lamb. With the stars being in position as per the scriptural star clock, and six months later, on the first day of the seventh month, the sun and moon move 180 degrees to the opposite position as a clock would. 
But on a 13th month year, the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah aligns itself to keep the entire timing system aligned. And are better stated by Hanok, to bring in all the years exactly. Because, as per scripture, the sun announces the beginning of a day, rules it, and determines the timing of the circuit and or tukufa along with the years. While the stars help announce the seasons and the beginning of a month with the moon. As the moon is designed to announce the beginning of a month, which helps determine appointed times while ruling the night with the stars. Because on the evening of the pagan day of Friday, March 30th, the evening before New Moon Day in 2018, this is what we will actually see in the heavens that further proves astronomically in creation that we indeed have a 13th month. We will see the moon in proximity to a star known as Zavajava, which translated means beautiful Yahuwah. With another star known as Zanya al Zawaya, when translated means Yahuwah answered. Along with a star known today as Spica, known originally as the scriptural branch, which will be above the horizon. Pointing to the star known today as Arcturus, which was originally and scripturally known as Ash, the bear pointer which reveals the position of Ursa Major, the big bear, in its proper season of a 13th month. Yes, Yahuwah appoints the number of the stars, and he gives names to all of them, doesn't he? So yes, at sunrise on the pagan day of Saturday, March 31st, when the moon greets the sun at sunrise, it will be the first day of the 13th month. Indeed, the sun, moon, and the stars have a value and purpose, as per the very word. And why this perfect scriptural and astronomical alignment only occurs on a 13th month. Read the book of Ezekiel for further information on a scriptural 13th month. And please, do not allow anyone to number your days for you. Because they will add and take away from the truth. Which is so easily verified in scripture and creation. Because, without any doubt... The scripture and creation easily verify that there is indeed a 13th month, let alone what is indeed in a scriptural year as verified in creation. This concludes part two of this three-part series. In counting our days with the sun, please have patience with us as we finalize part three of this three-part series series. We continue to pray in the name which is above all names that these scriptural study videos provide value to you and your loved ones. Until next time, Yahuwah willing, all the best in the name which is above all names.